In the 1980s, there was a real surge in grim dark fantasy, with the release of The Dark Crystal, Return to Oz, Warhammer Fantasy, and the Berserk manga, there was a real outcry for darker, grittier fantasy. Around this time, Disney, a company that focuses mainly around family entertainment, really wanted to diversify their content as well. After creating countless children's films, they decided to team up with Paramount Studios, and out of this exploring of content, and also a little bit of cooperation with Paramount Studios, they created the film known as Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer is a movie about a virgin eaten dragon called Firmifrax Pejorative, who has an unspoken deal with the Kingdom of Erland, where the kingdom has a lottery of what young girl lives or dies. What do you mean by that? That's when the princess finds out that she was excluded from the lottery and decides to rig it so that she would be eaten by the dragon. A young apprentice called Galen decides he will slay the monster and stop the lottery altogether, hence the name Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer is one of those films where you watch it and become an instant fan. Firmifrax's effects are done really well, and it really holds up for a film done in 1981. The film used one hydraulic 40-foot model and 16 dragon puppets. Each was capable of flying, crawling, and breathing fire. And that really adds to the respect of the effort and craftsmanship that went into making this film. On top of that, it has a very interesting story that asks about the morality of sacrificing the few to save the majority. And it has extremely well done battle scenes. It truly is a classic of fantasy and deserves to be watched and respected as a piece of art that's aged perfectly into the modern era. Dragon Slayer really turns the trope of slaying dragons on its head. And you can really see how George R. R. Martin really appreciated this film and took inspiration for the theme of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon especially with these distant yet familiar character names such as Tyrion, Valyrian, and Firmifrax. <laughs> But George R. R. Martin did say that it was his fifth favourite fantasy film and it was a big inspiration for Game of Thrones. He also said Firmifrax is the best dragon ever shown on film. That's also why Dragon Slayer is a perfect film to watch while in a drought of House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones. Dragon Slayer turns every trope on its head, allowing for an authentic world similar to medieval histories where it teaches the fewer that not everything goes the way you want it to and sometimes it ends badly. Firmifrax pejorative really feels like a Game of Thrones dragon, except more evil. This dragon refuses to die multiple times, and in the movie, it truly breathes fear and chaos into the viewers. That might be why Guillermo del Toro said that Firmifrax is his favourite movie dragon alongside Dragon Maleficent. Though this film isn't flawless, as the main character, Galen, can have very dry and amateur dialogue in certain scenes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The actor playing him too can come up as very actressy, which can really take away from the dark medieval world they live in. Please don't talk like that. But not enough to take you out of the fantasy completely, especially with a great supporting cast of Ian McDermott, Ralph Richardson, and John Hallam. Bring me my bow. Although Firmifrax was conceived as a creature of magical origin, screenwriter Hal Barwood envisioned Firmifrax with various rules of evolution kept in mind. For instance, making her a four-limbed animal in concordance with vertebrae biology, which again is very similar to the dragons of Game of Thrones, yet done before. Barwood himself was inspired by the body plan of the Jurassic Pterosaur, which is known as Ramphorhynchus. They also tried to give the dragon a little bit of a personality, to avoid creating something similar to the titular creature from Alien, which they deemed too hideous to look at. Specifically, he incorporated a bony ridge over the eyes, which swept over the temples and merged into the horns, giving the creature a notable frown. He also modelled the articulation of its jaw on that of a rattlesnake's, as a single pivot jaw made it look too duck-like. In keeping with the necessity of the dragon being aerodynamic, its feet were modelled on those of birds, specifically chickens. 
Dragon Slayer is one of the best dragon films of all time, especially in a world that loves to create dragons as a cartoony and whimsical creature over the fiery weapons of death they are. Dragon Slayer really is a great film to watch if you are a dragon fan, and enjoy films and series which are dark and enjoy killing off characters who make mistakes, very much like Game of Thrones. Dragon Slayer is a film for the ages and a worthy cult classic. It is also Disney's darkest film to this day, so definitely give it a watch. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Also, go watch my latest video, which was about Pokemon. It's about the state of Pokemon games and how I kind of wish that we had something more developed than the games that we got. So if you're interested in Pokemon, go watch that video and make sure to follow the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.